I all hope all is well. On today's video, I wanted to take the time to address some comments that I have been seeing in the comments section of a video I did three years ago. Now, the video in question was one that I did yeah, three years and three months ago. It was called Solar Powered Desalination, how to extract drinking water from seawater using a solar still. Now, the video has actually gotten almost 200,000 views, I believe it is, so it is quite popular. Um, and along with it came not only the views, but considerable amount of comments. And I had so many different comments from all over the world um, of people asking certain questions about it and a lot of suggestions in regards to ways to improve the system. Um, so I've decided, as I promised in a lot of my replies in the comments, to actually get my gear together and have a crack at actually doing the experiment again, but this time by using some of the suggestions as supplied by the commenters. And one of the suggestions that many commenters suggested was to use a glass jar that had either been painted or one that was coated with something that was black. Now, it was also suggested that um, we could paint the jar um, however, painting the jar black or dark could lead to contamination inside the solar still itself. So I've been on the lookout for a glass jar with a black coating on it for three years at least, um, purely so I could use it without the risk of contaminating the water supply that was being generated as well. Um, so as you can see in these clips here, um, I managed to find myself that black unit. Um, so you've got your black jar there with a, it's like a vinyl um, outside plastic coating to it. Um, I did check it to see if there were any glues or anything like that. It looks to be pretty safe. Um, and one clear jar. So that will be our um, baseline vessel. Um, the baseline vessel will basically be um, like the standard unit I did previously in the video beforehand. And basically, I'm going to set them up in the exact same position out in the sun, side by side. Um, and both of the vessels, so not only the inner glass jars, but also the outer glass jars are identical. So each of them holds a litre each. Um, and the risk of contamination from the black jar is minimal. It's a, um, a plastic that's been shrunk around the glass jar. So I did check it for glue and stuff like that, and it appears to be safe. Um, well, as safe as I could hope it to be anyway. I feared if I used a paint substance or something else like that, then I risked obviously yeah, contaminating the water supply. So we wanted to avoid that at all costs. And if you're doing something like this at home as well, it is definitely something you need to consider. You don't want to inadvertently risk contaminating your water supply. Now, in these jars, as you can see here, and I will go through the process again, um, it is just seawater, as you've seen at the start of the video that I collected from the beach and put it into a bucket, brought it home, and then just top those jars up. Now, this unit is essentially very basic in its design, but the way it works is actually quite technical. So it is basic yet technical. And the reason I know that is because I've tried so many different types of solar stills and these conical shaped jars are so far the pick of the units um, in regards to durability, in regards to the risk of um, not getting any contamination, um, the glass jars are the way to go. As you can see with the, um, the glass tops there, they're a conical shaped top. And the reason that's important is if it was a flat surface, during the day, the evaporation occurs, and then during the night, the condensation occurs, as you can see in this one here. Um, you can see, obviously, there's quite a bit of condensation on that, but if it was a flat surface above the jar, just like a flat lid, I found that the condensation hangs from the lid. It doesn't actually run down. So what we're trying to do is encourage the condensation to run down through the use of gravity. So gravity is actually very important in a system like this. Now, I've had so many suggestions about other ways to improve this, um, but for this video, this is the only change I have made. 
So using that black jar there, the dark colored jar, was the only difference I made between this and the base unit. And it is working surprisingly well. Um, so after one day, which this footage is, you can see quite a lot of condensation building up in the unit itself. And there is quite a bit of water already forming on the floor of the jar. So what it's doing is it's evaporating during the day. Then during the night, the cool air is passing by the glass jar and the lack of the sun means the um, there's a loss of energy. And during the night, the cool jar cools down to the point where it meets its dew point. So the moisture inside the jar that was evaporated during the day meets its dew point and then runs down the edges of the jar. And this includes from the very top of the lid. So the conical shaped lid is vitally important. This was taken after about three to four days, I believe it was. And you can see just how much fluid is actually forming in there. This is by far the most successful unit I have so far had the privilege of putting together. And it's all thanks to the commenters um, by putting comments in the section below. If you have any further suggestions in regards to ways we can improve this system, let's do it. I reckon put your comments in the section below and I will pick um, the next one to develop and we'll develop that comment into a feasible outcome where we can develop it into something that's practical and then we'll implement it into the system and we'll test it against the black unit. So the dark colored unit, we'll test it against the dark colored unit to see what type of results we can get. I'm hoping with incremental steps, we can improve the system so that we go from perhaps 50 mil a day to 200 mil a day, 300 mil a day. And I think if we can keep working in small steps like that, I'd be very surprised um, at just how, how far we can actually take this. Now, as simple as this process may appear to be, I firmly believe that this is a process that everyone should take upon themselves to fully understand. Um, it's one thing to watch a video and just say that you've learnt the process, but it's another thing to actually get a couple of glass jars and go out into the backyard and set it up and have a crack at doing it yourself. There's no better learning experience than actually having a go at doing these processes yourself. Doing experiments such as these will change the way you potentially look at the world. It will also make you appreciate the value of water, which is exactly what this video aims to do. Now, it was obviously time to do the collection, so these are the results. Um, this was after six days and six nights of actually processing. Um, and you can see the difference in yields just by visually assessing the video footage here. Um, the black unit has um, double the fluid at least and the standard unit, the unit from my previous video, um, yes, it has produced some fluid, but it is substantially less than the altered unit itself. So without a doubt, it is conclusive. The commenters were correct. And I don't mind admitting defeat, honestly. Um, if the commenters have brought forward a suggestion and the suggestion has improved the yield substantially, then I believe it is a win for everyone. Um, this is not an intelligence competition. It is all about bringing around ideas and sharing ideas on certain subjects such as the distillation of seawater by using the power of the sun and ways to improve it. And I believe, um, you know, YouTube's a really good platform for sharing these ideas and for learning from each other. Um, and I've certainly learned from the commenters. And in the following footage, you can see as I tilt that jar there, there is, you know, a substantial amount of fluid there. It is after six days and six nights, so that needs to be noted. And this is the standard unit. So this is the same unit I used in the previous video. Um, now, all I wanted to do was just measure exactly how much um, 
distilled water had been produced over six days and six nights. And as you can see from this footage here, um, it wasn't a huge amount, um, but it is still fluid and, and it could still get you out of a bit of trouble if you ever got stuck. Um, but it is a step in the right direction, that's for certain. Um, we're not disparaging the first video. If anything, this video is all about just improving it and um, basically acknowledging that the first video was a step in the right direction. Uh, so as you can see here, we have around about uh, 45 to 50 mil approximately. Um, so it is a substantial amount of fluid considering it is actual distilled water. So during this point, I did have a taste of it as well. I wanted to taste it to make sure that none of the seawater itself had actually leached into the distilled water. And that definitely was not the case. So it is safe to consume. You can have a taste of it if you do produce some results yourself. Um, there's no harm in doing that. There has been a substantial amount of research into how safe distilled water actually is for you. And providing you've got a well-rounded diet, um, there is no risk associated with consuming distilled water. Now, I'm sure I'll probably get a bit of kickback in the comment section about this, um, but it will generate a good conversation about the subject as well. So everyone can um, form their own opinions about it once they see exactly what the facts are and how they're laid out. Now, this unit here, this is the altered unit. This is the one this whole video has been about. It's all been about comparing this black unit to the standard unit itself. Now, simply removing the black vessel from the distillation unit reveals just how much fluid is indeed on the bottom of this unit. Um, so it is impressive exactly how much this one has managed to manufacture or to extract from the seawater and it is substantially more than the standard one. Um, so as you can see there we're at uh, two and a half times to even three times as much fluid has been extracted um, using a black inner vessel in the distillation unit compared to a clear vessel inside the distillation unit. So this proves how one simple little change can significantly alter the outcome of the experiment. Just by changing the inner vessel from a clear glass jar to a glass jar that was coated with something black, we have tripled our outcome, or we have tripled the amount of distilled water we can extract from seawater simply by using the power of the sun. And I think that's something absolutely amazing.